Hi guys, this is Bart from Ragecraft and together with Night Painting we would like to welcome you in a series of tutorials that we'll be creating for you on different lines and miniatures from, from Ragecraft. So today I would like to show you the new line that we just released as a series of five miniatures from Fist and Fangs universe and these are the orcs that you can see here. So you have one of the warrior with the spur, the other one with the hammer, and also with the crossbow that you can see probably here. And you have also the champion, which is uh, also armed with the, with the hammer with a small conversion, which you can make by your own here pretty easily as what was done by Night Painting. Some of you are asking us about the size comparison of our miniatures versus many famous games that are available in the market. So I can show you the comparison of scale, which is 32. Uh, so if you compare with this warrior that you have on the left, it's almost the same size. The our orc is more bulky because yeah, it's it's an it's an orc, so it has to be a little bit more bigger than the regular human mm, uh, warrior. Uh, even if it's a bad guy here on the left, still this one is a little bit bit bigger, but it's still the same the same size and the same scale that we are applying here. So this is pretty much about the introduction of the miniatures that we have. So we will be showing you and creating a couple of tutorials of different elements that I will be painting for you. Uh, so elements like green skin, the, the, co the coat here, the brown coat, the white elements of uh, his clothes, uh, the wood piece and the, some, some aspects of non-metallic here applied with a bit of rust. Uh, so these are the elements that we'll be showing, uh, but we'll be splitting them in different chapters, so each video will contain different elements to make it easy for you to watch. So in this video I would like to show you how I'm painting the orc skin. So I will be using this as the example. So you can see here it's on the, my left, you already see the painted model. And here is the model that I prepared for the video. So here guys, I'm showing you a model which is already prepared for painting for the video. Uh, I have applied here the black coat using black base using the airbrush and also a bit of gray pre-shade to have a sketch of the light. So you can see how the light is distributed on the model. So this is basically the main, main um, part that I would like to show and focus during my painting. And that's the sketch. So today I will be showing you how to paint the skin, orc skin, green orc skin. I will be focusing mostly on the on the leg and a bit of face. The model also has a little bit parts visible of the skin here on the hands, but it's not so much. So that's why I will focus mostly on the on those two legs and a bit of head. Short comment about paints that I will be using for painting the skin. The main color is the Reaper Grass Green, which will have some shades in the deepest part of the miniature, which is the uh, scale uh, black forest green with a combination of dark green. In very deep shades I'll be using the brown instead of black, just to make the colors a bit more warm in the shades. And for the lightning I will be using Citadel Mood Green with combinations of autumn green from scale and for some super top lights a bit of yellow or white. So I will start here by painting the first, the first part of the skin, which is the leg. Uh, as you can see, it's already pre-sketched. So you see already part of the light that is coming from, from that side. So these are the elements that will be uh, the most um, visible and the more full of light. That's why the, all the shades will be coming from, from the bottom, which is here. And for this part, and I will use uh, the darkest greens from my palette to build the base and foundation of the green color to make it also intense. Uh, what is important about the dark colors here, because it's already pre-sketched and you can see the draft of the light, I will be not using the, green, the darkest colors for the top in order to keep it, to keep the sketch and to keep the light uh, because it will boost later the, the lightest colors that I will be applying. So the darkest color I will be using only here and here. So I will use um, the combination of 
those two greens. And uh, because I'm using a lot of glazing, which is a very thin layer of very much diluted paint, I'm using the acrylic thinner, so which you have here. And now I'm starting building the, the base of the green color. So all the elements that you see here, which are visible as a dark or black, I'm applying the dark green and also trying to emphasize the, the sketch a little bit more. It will not look pretty at this stage, so don't be afraid of having this type of result at the, at the moment because it's just the, the first sketch of the greens. So that's why the pre-shade that I have done with airbrush helps me a lot to keep the consistency of the light, which I believe is a good support for the people who are at intermediate level, uh, because you can follow um, the light which was created by the airbrush by just simple applying gray color on the black uh, base and the black coat. So now I'm just building and I will be refining the green base. So I'm just trying to build a sketch and have it as a starting point for applying another colors. When you are painting with and using technique of glazing, it is very important to wait till the paint applied on the miniature is dry, because then you will be just dragging and uh, dragging the paint and moving it if it's still wet, and it will just uh, be not nice looking effect and the result. So just try to be more patient here. And this technique is a little bit slower in terms of from my side and my observations, it's slower, uh, but it still gives you a very nice and smooth transitions afterwards. So now I have a sketch of the base uh, and I will try to do this, go to the next step, which is applying the main foundation color, uh, which I will try to apply probably in most of the areas here, uh, but keep a little bit of light for the, the main light that will come. So for this, I will be using this green one, which is the um, Reaper uh, Grass Green. So this is my main color used for the skin. I'm also diluting it with the thinner, uh, acrylic thinner that is making the paint behaving like a milk on the wet palette. And what is also important when you use glazing and you want to have a smooth transitions, what you can do is um, use, make the brush a little bit dry. So it's almost like a dry brush, 
so there is not a lot of paint, uh, but still there is paint that you can use uh, and apply um, successfully on on the miniature. Okay, so now I'm trying to do it. So I'm trying to you to feel all the gray elements that you see here. And also I'm going in the direction to top. So the this color, the main green color, when I'm applying, I'm trying to move the brush to the top so like dragging it from that side, from the dark side, so the tip of the brush is going from, starts here, but it goes and stops in that direction because I want to have the paint in uh, bigger intense here, not to have uh, a kind of a sign of that part in the dark elements. So I'm just dragging it into that direction. So it will stop here. Okay, I need to wait when it's dry. Okay, you just needed to make it fast. So this color is not yet ready, uh, if you compare to that miniature, I'm still probably at the beginning of my journey, but it shows you how the direction of the light should be kept as it was appreciated. So with another layer of that green, it should be more intense because it's so diluted, you can't expect it will be perfect from the first application of the, of the paint. So that's why glazing in this technique requires a little bit more patience because you need to wait when, it's dry, when, it's, uh, when it dries uh, and then you need to apply a little bit more layers uh, to make this more intense and vivid. Okay, so this is the probably like a second layer already applied. I still need to wait to, to make it and that is um, that it dry, when it dries. And again, I'm dragging, pulling the paint to the middle. So I start from here and then I push the, I drag the, the brush into, into that direction. So then the main green color will stay here, not here because I'm just in a delicate way starting from the dark and then I pull it to the middle and it stays in the middle. So it gives you smooth transition on that area of the miniature. Okay, now I need to wait when it until it dries and it's not very wet. Okay, just give a moment. Okay, I'll just, I'll make a small correction here and there. I see there is no paint there, so let me fix it. Till the top is being dropped.
So what I'm doing also in the uh, dark part of the leg, I'm also applying a bit of brown, as you can see on my wet palette. I also make it very thin and I put this in the, the deepest part. What is nice about the brown, if you paint orc skin, which is green, green typically, uh, gr the brown color makes this much more contrasted. So I will apply the green, the brown paint in those deepest elements to build higher contrast. So now I will move to painting them the top of the leg of the leg here, which I will be using the combination of leaf green and a little bit of mood green from from Citadel. So in this way the mixing those two, it's like 50-50, it gives you better smooth transition and again I will be not using this paint here but I will just limit my painting area to the main elements in the in the middle so in this way I will not destroy the work that was done on the previous stage I'm also trying to do it like a little bit of sketch so Typically when I use glazing, the first layer is not perfect, it's just to give me the direction that I'm following and improving at later stages. So I'm trying again to drag the brush to the middle, so that's why I will be and not to destroy the camera view, I'm just doing like that to pull the paint to the middle. So that's the, the sketch. I'm also putting light here to build higher contrast. So I'm continuing on building the main light, which is the combination of um, grass green and mood green from Citadel. So that's the, the main first light that I'm applying on the base color. And I'm doing this only on the top of the muscles, so only those elements that should have the biggest um, intense of the light. Because I'm assuming the light comes from that direction, the biggest amount of lights and uh, the light color, which will be almost going into yellowish, should be in the, in the top in, and in the middle of the leg. Now I will try to fix a little bit the transition, so I will come back to the grass green color and I will work on that side of the leg, because as you can see it's very sharp here, so I will try to make it more smooth, it's the, the, it's the paint is a grass green and it's very diluted, so I am trying only to play between the dark part and the light, just to fix the transition, so it's glazing. So there is not a lot of paint on the brush, but I will repeat this process for a couple of times just to make it work and look more smooth. So again I'm pulling the brush to the direction of light, not to have 
light color visible in the in the shades here so that's why I'm just pulling the brush in in that direction I will do the same on the knee okay. jeszcze raz that's not a bill. <laughs> so again I'm using the uh, grass green paint which is the main green like a base green for the for the skin to build the smooth transition between the light which you can see here and the very dark color which is here so now I'll try to make build that transition so I'm pulling the brush and I'm just doing like a one move every time but on the a bit below or going a little bit up so you don't paint in the same way okay. I will now do it here and because I'm still using and all the time using here glazing the previous area uh, layers will be going through uh, the current one that I'm applying so this gives you know the good good foundation for building a pretty smooth transition if you like to have a smooth transition because there are of course different techniques and uh, people like different ways of uh, building the structure of the miniature but in case of the skin i'm trying to make it more smooth so i will try to fix light uh, in this area and also here so I'll just use a little bit more thick paint here to make it more stronger and visible so I'm also pulling the paint and the light color a little bit um, here so in this way the contrast between the dark part on this muscle will be bigger and in this way the miniature and the muscles will not look flat which is something that you want to have uh, when the miniature is more muscle or bulky now I'll fix this light the first light of the green so again pulling to the middle and make weight a bit so it's so it's not wet when I will be applying the next layers Right now I'll, I will move to mood green, just this color, only pure, to make it more intense. So again, making the area of painting even smaller than in previous stage, in order to leave some space uh, to have visible transitions that are coming from my previous stages so I'm just every step is a little bit smaller amount of area that you are painting So it's not perfect because it's the, the quick sketch that I did of during the first layer but as I said the first mm, activity with the brush with the another face is always uh, not the ideal in case of doing the glazes because you need a little bit more layers to make it more smooth but you already can see how the light will be looking with the green colors so now I'll try to make it smooth so I will come back to the previous stage of the paints so a little bit grass green again to fix the transition here
So I'm just doing this between the uh, dark color and the, the light that I just applied. I'm not putting the paint everywhere, it's just on those elements which are not looking smooth. So you try to play on the border between one layer and the second one and in this way you make the transition more smooth. But in the same time you don't want to make you, you don't want to attack all the area because you will just kill the previous stage. However the good thing is that previous stage will be going through the darker paint so still you can have a nice smooth way but you can just you have to be very careful not to make it fully uh, painted by the darker color because you can just uh, lose your time and the result that you tried to create in the previous stage. So again now I'm pulling the brush into that direction to make smooth transition on the borders and I may need a little bit more time now to fix it to make it looks better so I might now mix mood green with grass green when the ratio will be 70 to 30 where 70 is the mood green so the majority of that paint will be coming here so I'm working on the transition Here, so I can put some dots and because it's skin it doesn't have to be very clean on every area it can be a little bit of structure of the skin so I'm just fixing that so remember to make sure that the previous layers that or previous moves of the brush uh, are not wet Otherwise you'll be just mixing the paint on the fly and it can build not nice result. So when, it, when it's dry you can move to apply the, another layer but try to make sure that it's, that it's not wet anymore. Okay, so now I'll try to use uh, autumn green just to build lighter version of the light but I will mix it a little bit with the mood green so you can say that it's all again 50-50 but it's a bit lighter so that's a gradual building light but I will be just now focusing to that area so just the middle of the of the leg of the of the muscle And again, it's the first touch of the brush, so it's not perfect if it comes to this, the smooth transition, but I will fix it by coming back to the previous paint. So it was the pure mood green, which I will apply in a minute. And again, I'm pulling the brush to the middle of the muscle to make sure that this is the main area that I'm working and I'm not touching anything as I, apart from that. Okay, so there is like a first sketch on that. After a short break, I have worked a bit on the transitions here. So on those elements, so on the borders between the main green color, which is grass green here, and uh, mud green and autumn green. I was basically making most of my transition focus area on playing here. So basically I was using those colors, so grass green and a little bit of mood green. Very thin, diluted by the thinner. And I was basically applying it on the borders just to make the transition smooth. And that's why you can see that now it's a little bit better if it comes to the transition and I can work on that till I'm satisfied but at the moment I think it's okay to move forward so now what I would like to do is to apply the main highlights 
key highlights here. So I will be using autumn green with yellow. So I will just mark where this light should be. Uh, I would do it here. So just a quick sketch. So the paint here is not so diluted and it's just a, uh, for the sketch. And now I will work with the mood green mostly and autumn green again to apply the layer on the main highlight which was a little bit with green. So again I'm doing a very smooth diluted paint and I will be applying layers with a little bit dry brush here. So I'm just working starting on the border between the key highlight and the previous layer and I'm just applying it on that key highlight here. So I need to be careful to make sure that the paint is, is, uh, has dried. It's not wet anymore. Otherwise I'll be just mixing the paint and it will be not looking good at the miniature. Okay, I will now use just a mood green with very thin layer over the main light just to make it more greenish. So just a quick wash of the glaze and it should also give a smooth transition at the end. And I'm applying it on that area that I was painting a little bit before. When applying this mm, wash of the green, uh, you make you try to make sure that it's again dried the previous layers, um, and then the green color would will be, I mean the yellow col uh, yellowish colors that were applied a little bit before as a key highlight now will be more smooth, and it also gives you a nice transition. but you try to play now with that um, green color that I'm doing here uh, just on those areas that are supposed to have the, the light not anywhere else because the dark elements should stay dark all the time at that stage so here the transition is pretty okay here I see that there is a little bit more um, straight line so I'm just trying to make it smooth here and there. I will work a bit the knee. And here I'll just make a focus of the of the contrast by putting a little bit light over her over there under the, the main muscle of the knee. Now I'm just moving a bit to the borders between the mood green and the grass green color, the main color. And now you can see that the, the previous layers are more intense with the green. They are not looking so dirty as the previous when I was sketching. And that's the power of glazes that every time the, they make focus of the previous and they make intense the previous layers. So, and the, in the same time you have a nice transition, so that's 
pretty cool about glazes. What I can do right now is I can put a little, like a, the, the main blinks of the light and I will use just the white color just to put some quick sketch and I will just do this probably on the top of the knee and maybe a little bit here as the main light and if I'm not happy I can always come back with different layers of green so make a return in the steps to make it hide but still this white color will be going through um, the greens and the yellowish colors that I can put here but I'm just focusing on that area and not anywhere else I'm, I need to wait to make it dry just take some little bit of heavy support and now I will apply autumn green with the mood green so it will be a bit yellowish and I will apply it for the on the white because I want to have the green lights the main lights more yellowish than the whites so make, make it more warm but still this white color will be going through that layer that I'm applying right now so now I just need to apply it and that will be pretty much everything So basically what I'm doing right now, again, I'm just hiding the white that I put here as a key light just to build a very high contrast between the top of the, of the muscle uh, and when I turn the miniature it gives you the, the contrast gives you the, the, the shape of this 3D uh, look and feel. I will need to work a bit on the transitions here because I see that the contrast here is too high. So I'll just apply a little bit of more mood green mixed with uh, grass green. And I will just play on the borders of the key light and come back a little bit to the main part of the muscle. Because I'm still, all the time using the glazes, it should be uh, visible and I'm not and I will be not losing the light that I have built previously so let me just work on that Now I, I see that I need to come back a little bit to darker part of the muscle, which is here, because there is too much light. So I just try to build a smooth transition here. And here. fixing bit here and there. Okay, and again. I will now just use autumn green with the mood green from Citadel. 
just to fix the light and it should be pretty much everything for that part of the leg. Okay, I need to just fix a bit the main main color in that part of the muscle and I think we will be done. So, for the moment, the, this part of the muscle is, is almost done. Uh, what I could do here is apply some effects of uh, very old or used orc skin on the top of the knee and just by applying some pink type of colors or human pink flesh color. So it looks like uh, a little bit torn and used. But I will come back to that part when I will be painting the face because I will be using that that aspect, uh, that, that effect a bit later, so I will just use the same color. So you can show, you can see that when I will be painting the face, that I will return to the knee uh, for the moment. Um, and just for the, for the time being, it's, it's okay, it's more, as you can see, it's more intense. It's more intense than the miniature that I was, um, that I'm having here, uh, because the colors that I, that I'm used, they are, I'm using here, uh, on the video here, they are more typically used for painting orc skin, which is the, I think the, this is the, the key color that was helping me building the, uh, the intense, very intense green yellowish color. But you can also make it more soft, as I have done it here on the left, uh, when you use more um, white or bone white type of colors and then it's not so vivid uh, and uh, mm, active green color, let me put it like that, but pretty much this is how it can be done, okay? Before I jump to the, to the face, I will also show you how to make an effect of uh, something which is, gives additional life to the miniature, especially in orcs, if the uh, things, elements which are very visible, like, like knees uh, or knuckles uh, or nose and, and mouths are painted with a little bit pink uh, or flesh color. It gives like additional flavor of the miniature. So I will show you this in a minute. Uh, and I will also do this in, in the same for uh, the same for face. So for creating this effect, I will be using pink flesh color from scale. And I will be mixing this flesh color a lot with uh, green, auto, with um, uh, mood green from uh, Citadel and autumn green from Scale. So first I will just take a little bit of the pink and I will try to dilute it. 
and we'll apply for at, at the knee. And we'll just mix the paint. So we'll just apply a bit just in the top of the knee. There are different techniques of doing that. You could also do the same with applying just the red color and then applying again the yellowish greens. And here I'll just use pink. So now I just mix a little bit pink with autumn green and with uh, a bit of grass green. So I will just put a layer on top of that previous step that I did. As I want uh, this pink flesh not to be fully pink but be kind of mixed with the greenish so it's, um, it's, it's aligned with the overall greens, green scheme of, of the miniature. So here I'm using more yellowish color on the top and on the bottom I will just mix green, uh, grass green as this is the, the paint that is mostly visible there with the pink flesh as it will be darker and it will create a composition with, with that darker elements. So it will look a little bit like dirty green. Uh, in this palette of greens but it should create the overall composition and I'm mixing and painting that color on the borders between the pink and the previous layers. And I'm also here pulling the brush in the direction of the center of the knee. So in this way the transition from the greens or dark greens should be more uh, smooth. Okay, so overall this is how it could look like and I will need to just clean here so I'll just move back now to the darker elements of green and we'll just try to fix it here quickly. And again, these darker elements I'm fixing on the border between the previous steps. Thank you. 
So this is the overall effect. So you can see that the yellowish green colors are mixed a little bit with pink. So at the beginning, as I said, I applied the pink flesh. And then on top of that, I did glazes with autumn green mixed with the pink flesh. Uh, and the thin layer was applied here. That's pretty much it about the, the knee.